Hi everyone, my name is Carl. I would like to share with you a story that made me have a nervous breakdown. I am very hurt and painful to talk about this situation, but to keep silent about it is no longer possible. I am sure that you will understand. My family was not exemplary. We had no family traditions, no dinners or breakfasts, no family movie nights, no holidays, nothing at all. It was just the way we lived. Every man for himself. My parents didn't get along with each other much either, but at least once in a while, they could get along with each other. And we, the kids that is, me and my little sister Nellie, it was like we were just visiting. Just for a very long time. And we became guests, which bored us to the point that we were no longer asked if we were hungry, what we were going to eat. Nell and I hardly ever got any time. Mum and Dad were always on the phone, and it was awful. I remember one day I decided to make dinner for me and Nell. I went over to Mum and asked her to feed us, but Mum was online and looking at pictures of somebody else. What a bitch! Where does she always get the money to go on vacation to the Maldives? Mum, can you hear me? What do you want? We're hungry. I'm sick of it. We've eaten recently. That was in the morning before school, and now it's lunch, even more. I saw my mum get annoyed, and suddenly I got really scared. I know that when she gets angry, she starts breathing fast, and then explodes. I heard that precursor, that very breathing, and immediately decided to change the situation. Mum, guess what? I'm not hungry. I ate this morning. I'm fine. I'll just feed Nell. I can do it myself, okay? Mum threw me a surprised, but at least not angry look, and said, Well, go, go! Do you know how to turn on the stove? And I was almost out of the room and turned to her on the doorstep and said with a smile, Yes, mum, it's okay. I'm eight years old. I'll figure it out. Eight years old? I was only eight years old. Did you know how to cook when you were eight? How many stories have I heard from my cousins? They told me that the hardest job they had was deciding what to order for mum's lunch and dinner. That was it. But Nell and I had a different situation. A different life with different parents. I googled an omelette recipe as best I could and went into the kitchen. My reading sucked, but I could control my voice and find a decent YouTube video. I asked my little sister to sit and watch cartoons, found a frying pan, butter, eggs and milk. It seemed to be pretty normal, with no smell. I turned on the stove and proceeded to cook. It took me an unreal amount of utensils and I was sweating. It was hard to lug a chair everywhere because I couldn't reach the stove. Anyway, an hour later, my slightly burnt omelette was ready. I called out to Nell and she came running in a second and pounced on the food. How is it? Is it good? Yeah, even better than my mum's cooking. Just don't tell her. We giggled, but then my mother's voice sounded abruptly behind me. She walked in on us, lazily camping in her old robe, yawned, pulled herself up, and then asked in a stern voice, Don't tell mum what? We were silent, hushed, even stopped chewing. Nell all squeezed into a little lump and stared down at the floor. What is that? What is that smell? Gas? Didn't you turn off the gas, you dumbass? Did you want the house to blow up with me? Do you have any idea what could have happened, you idiot? She yelled at me and I got up from my seat and just listened to her with my head down guiltily. Mum was getting more and more turned on and I could hear her breathing. That was the signal. My mother came very close to me and had already begun to yell that I was no one's child, that I was so bullshit and that my hands were growing out of the wrong place, and that she remembered that recently her friend and her son went to a restaurant where her son sang a song for her and the other guests in a fancy suit, and got even more furious. Well, why would I want my son to sing that song? What for? And then she was interrupted by Nell. You have a worthy son. It's a pity he has such a good-for-nothing mother. My mother's dropped open in surprise. She rarely hit Nell, always saying it wasn't the right time like she was little, but she did the best she could on me. Nell stood there and looked at her straight in the eye and mother at her, and then she took my omelette plate and took a bite and called my cooking crap. Then she threw it against the wall and accused me of trying to poison her. Mum sent me to my room for the rest of the day and put Nell in the corner for a few hours. In the evening, my dad come back. Do you ask how he protected us? Well, he didn't. What was the difference between him and Mama? He didn't care about anything at all. The main thing was to be fed and then not touched until the morning. My mum cooked for him, but my sister and I were never called to dinner. I don't know why, it was just the way it was. In the evening when Nell and I went to bed, she said she was hungry again. I made sure my parents were asleep and ran into the kitchen to look in the refrigerator. Dad's favourite sausages were there. Apparently he had bought them for himself, and there was nothing else to eat, so I took one for Nell. 
When I turned around, mum was standing behind me. I jumped up and down out of fear. Oh, mum, I didn't see you. It shows, she said, crossing her arms across her chest. That pose meant I was in trouble. Big trouble. Uh, yeah, it's just that Nellie's hungry. You're using your little sister's cover to steal food from your parents' house, and it's someone else's food. Mum, I really don't want to eat. It's not for me. But my mum had already grabbed me by the ear and dragged me outside. She yelled that they do not need a thief in the family. Five minutes later, my mum threw my clothes on me and closed the doors. I didn't know what to do. I stood and cried. And then my mother said she would beat me if I didn't stop whining under the window. And then I left, without even saying goodbye to Nell. I had my jacket and boots and the same sausages in my hand. I wandered and lived on the street like a bum. I have no idea how many days passed, but I almost starved to death. I came home anyway. I didn't know what to say, but I was willing to do anything to get back and be near Nell. I really wanted to protect her because her integrity was only a matter of time. I knocked on the door, but an unfamiliar kid opened it for me. He said he lived there now. I didn't even know how to respond from shock. He shot the door in my face when he found out who I was. That was the end of it. I didn't even get a chance to say hello to my little sister. I decided to watch him and hid in a tree. I didn't have to sit long. I saw Nellie walk up to the refrigerator and he immediately slapped her on the arms. She must have said something back to him because she didn't even cry. I wondered how much she had matured in these days, but that boy immediately punched her in the face. And at that moment, my patience snapped. I jumped right out of the tree, onto the window, a good thing it was open. Like an enraged beast, I jumped on him and hit him as hard as I could. The kid flew sideways and breathed deeply. He was so scared, and I forced him out of the house and told him not to come back. At that moment, my mother came out. She too started to get angry and snapped at me. Why did you come here? No one is waiting for you here. Get lost. We found the perfect replacement for you. This boy is a hundred times smarter than you. Who are you to come here whenever you feel like it? Who are you to decide for yourself what to do? Ah, sucker, you don't know anything about life. I'm your son, mum. It came out of me from somewhere very deep. The words that I had wanted to say for a long time that I had been saving up inside of me. I'm your son. I'm eight years old. I'm not supposed to understand anything in life because I'm supposed to enjoy it. But thanks to you, mum, your fantasy loser who lies on the couch all day and envies her friends and their beautiful children instead of making your own. What are you doing? You blame me for everything. That I was born at the wrong time. That you lost your figure. That you don't work. You don't take the responsibility for your life. And you want me to? You know what? Here's a sausage for you. I take Nell and we leave. Or you become a normal mum, clean the fucking house, cook our meals and do our homework. Or else we'll just go straight to child welfare. I'd rather be in a boarding school than with you. My mother listened to this and my father stood behind me. He just clapped his hands and the only thing he said was... My son is the only one with balls here. And you know what? Mama squeezed out a pardon and went to make dinner. My name is Gwen. I recently went through the worst moment of my life. I had to choose between two people whom I loved, my mom and my boyfriend Ethan. I chose love, and he betrayed me. And all of this might not have happened if my mother hadn't given me a choice. It all started last summer vacation. My friends and I went to an amusement park to celebrate Independence Day. The holiday was very noisy and bright. We were preparing to have a good time. Festivities were held throughout the city, but a concert was organized in the heart of it. The mayor invited a popular rock band to perform some hot tracks. Naturally, their appearance on the stage caused a storm of emotions among the citizens. My friends, among others, were waiting for the band to finally sing so they could sign autographs and take selfies. They said that their Instagram followers would be jealous, and I would be sorry that I didn't take a picture too. I honestly said that I don't like the style of their music, clothes, it's just not my style. I didn't understand how guys who had longer hair on their heads than me could even like them. While my friends were bulldozing their way through the crowd for autographs, I went to get some hot dogs nearby. I don't know what's so sexy about guys with black eyeliner, but their music sure sucks, I said aloud as I waited for food. This is the kind of genre that really suits Independence Day because rock was invented in the U.S. and the U.K. And since the 1950s, music has remained popular all over the world, said a voice behind me. 
From fright, I turned around. It turned out to be the bass guitarist of this band. Damn, I thought. This was awkward. While I was trying to find the words to apologize, the musician took my hot dogs and said they were a gift from me as compensation. I was terribly indignant at this impudence, ran after him, and said that if our tastes different, I do not have to treat a hairy, decorated guy with food at my own expense. But he had already eaten everything by then and put the wrapper in my hands. Uh, I think I blushed with anger, slapped him, and left. He yelled at me to call him and let him buy me a proper dinner. I gave him my middle finger and walked away. Naturally, my girls saw this. On the way home, they took out all the brain, begged to go to dinner with him, and at the same time, take them with me. We'll be sitting at the next table and he won't even notice us. Please, this is an incredible chance, they said. From that moment, I had no peace. I would wake up and fall asleep to messages from my friends, begging and blackmailing me to meet them. I put up with it as long as I could, until one of them, Erica, said that she would tell my mother that I had lost her earrings. All right, one dinner and that's it. And how will we meet, by the way? I don't know his phone number, I said with crazy. But my prudent friends had already done everything. They took his number that day and arranged for an evening. I must admit I was surprised to see Ethan without black eyeliner, without a guitar, in normal clothes, with a normal hairstyle. It made him look much more attractive. He picked me up in the car, and my girlfriends followed us. Ethan took me to a restaurant. I was not in the mood, and I showed it with all my appearance. Despite this, Ethan was polite and tried to start a conversation. In the end, I couldn't help but laugh because behind us, my girls were gawking at us and taking surreptitious photos. The musician didn't even ask what was wrong. He just said, let me finally give you an autograph and your friends will leave us alone. The girls heard his words and immediately ran to him. They screamed, arranged a whole photo session in the restaurant. For their loud behavior, the administrator made a remark to them. I've never felt more stupid. Then the girls left. Ethan asked the waiter if they had his favorite cherry cheesecake, but there was none. He was upset and then offered to take me home as he saw my discomfort. I agreed. On the way, he talked a lot about his band and music, and then asked what I liked. So, imperceptibly, began a dialogue. It turns out that celebrities have their own quirks, despite the popularity and wealth. Ethan just loves cherry cheesecakes, especially if they are stolen. I laughed at his jokes for a long time. It's strange, but he turned out to be an interesting conversationalist. He was fond of chemistry, read a lot of smart books. It was a revelation to me. In general, since then, he has called and written almost every day. I became attached. A couple of weeks later, Ethan invited me to another band concert. I arrived a little early and snuck into backstage to give him a cherry cheesecake. In the dressing room was all his gang except himself. They started throwing dirty jokes at me, calling me another chick, and I was confused and didn't know what to do. Ethan went into the dressing room and led me away, excusing himself. He saw the cheesecake and kissed me for the first time. So our love story began. Naturally, my mother found out about it. She was against the rock musician who, according to her, is too irresponsible, windy, not serious. She told me every day that she wouldn't let me ruin my life the way she had because of my father. Every time we were going on a date, she would go out and chase my boyfriend away. My relationship with him was on the verge of breaking up because of her. So it was decided. I was going to run out of the house with Ethan. The day before, my mother and I had a big fight about our relationship, and one day I waited until my mother was asleep, packed up, and ran to Ethan's. In my farewell note, I asked my mother not to look for us. I was scared, running through the streets at night, and imagining in my head how Ethan and I were touring all over the world together, how happy we were together, how much we loved each other. I smiled and walked to the hotel. I knocked on the door of his room, but no one answered. 
The door was unlocked when I walked in, saw someone's shoes on the floor, and an untouched cherry cheesecake on the table. Moans came from the bedroom. At this moment, I felt my knees shaking, and tears immediately gushed from my eyes. I don't know which hurt more, that he betrayed me, or that my mother was right. By the morning I returned home, my mother was hysterical. She was about to call the police and saw me. My mother had only to look at my face. Instead of screaming and fighting, she hugged me tightly, and I sobbed. This is what I wanted to protect you from, my daughter. I will definitely never betray you, my mother said. Since then, I have always listened to her words.